Hey everybody, this is the Alex Manassa, here to share my uh, thoughts as I think out loud. As you all know, I'm an engineer. And as engineers, we go by results, right? What gets you the best results? We also go by how do things work? We're, uh, the theologians and the philosophers are going to ask why. The question of why is purely philosophical and spiritual. We're more concerned about with how. So how do things work? Uh, one thing that's always interested me is human behavior. Why do I behave a certain way? Why do I fear certain things? Let's talk about fear. Fear is one of the greatest persuaders. It is actually the most persuasive thing you can do. If you can be afraid of something, you are more likely to respond to it. That's just how biology works for anything with a brainstem. It is one of the first emotions that we have biologically. Our oldest ancestors have a sense of fear. You can start to see precursors of fear, even in the most simple musculoids or whatever that are in the sea. You know, if you make contact with them, they don't even have eyeballs. They, you know, make contact with this creature, like a squid or something, it's going to run away. That's the first thing. All it, it can survive purely on the one emotion of fear, right? So fear is very important. And I ask myself, why am I afraid of certain things? It makes sense to be afraid of spiders, right? Some of them are poisonous. It makes sense to be afraid of snakes uh, in our earlier you know, evolution, back when we were much smaller uh, and snakes were much bigger. They would be a real threat. One thing I could never figure out, though, is why are we afraid of public speaking? Now, with very few exceptions, public speaking, as far as I know, especially today, has never resulted in anyone getting murdered. <laughs> no one's ever been bit, you know, attacked for making a bad speech, right? I mean, the worst that you're going to get is a sort of uh, Dave Chappelle at age of 14 at the Apollo Theater just bombing and doing terribly. And just like some, peop some people aren't afraid of heights, Dave wasn't afraid of public speaking. They booed him off the stage at the age of 14 or so. I think it was 14. And he was like, you know, this is not so bad. Everybody else, that is their worst nightmare. We, we actually have, we are so biologically ingrained to be afraid of public speaking that we have nightmares about it. Nightmares. In nightmares, you have almost these Jungian uh, scenes play out. You know, if there's a lot of chaos, there's water. If there's a, a lot of fear, you're going to see spiders or you're going to feel, you're going to be high up. You're going to be, I, I just the other night, I had a dream where there was huge heights. I have, uh, uh, I don't know what uh, the fear of heights is called. I could look it up. It doesn't matter. Uh, I have a huge fear of heights, even going up a 10 foot ladder and I'm freaking out, right? Um, it's actually a really funny story behind that. It involves clowns. I'll tell it some other time. It's 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 probably the funniest way a child has ever been afraid of heights. I had an experience that made me afraid of heights. Before that experience, I still had nightmares. Okay, so the uh, fear of public speaking makes no sense whatsoever, right? Right? I started thinking about it, uh, and it actually makes perfect sense for social creatures to fear to the death to death fear ostracism you've i've seen this before with certain animals where if one of them just wasn't fit the mother would abandon it you're going to see this with shoe bills right if they have there's a really great documentary on planet earth i think where they talk about uh shoe bills they're these dinosaur looking birds and there's two uh, children in the nest and one of the children just beats up and bullies and steals the food from the smaller scrawnier one and eventually just knocks and this nest is in like a marsh so the bigger bully uh, of the two just throws the other one out of the nest into the bog so this wet sopping wet bird pitifully crying out for his parents and the parents look at it and just turn over to the bigger bully one and then just go over and take care of the bully the parents had made a decision that they are going to throw out the weak child because they cannot take care of two. They had to choose at some point. Nature gives us very difficult decisions. Bring that to public speaking. In our social sphere, if you see primates today, you're going to see social dynamics taking place. Among chimpanzees, for instance, uh, there are examples of tyrannical rulers, right? You get the, the, the head of the troop 
can have, you know, they have their own personality, right? So if the person who happens to be the head of the troop is a tyrant, takes food from people, you know, if there are children that aren't his, he'll throw the child out or kill the child. Just absolute, like, real archetypical, tyrannical father figure stuff, right? If another child, if one of his children starts to get too strong, kills the child. The thing is, the rest of the troop will band together and brutally murder that head, that that leader. It is very brutal. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if that behavior of purging unwanteds from the primates also can combine with the need to maintain the strength of the troop or face, you know, or face extinction, right? Those shoe bills made a choice. The choice was to survive and to survive, you have to do some very hard things. What I'm getting at is that once we started learning how to talk and how to express ourselves, it would not surprise me if there was an active fear of speaking out because it can go so, 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 so wrong for a member of the troop. Uh, what this could mean is, and fear of, of losing opportunities for mating, especially with our past. I'm not an expert on how primordial humans were, but I, I don't know if we actually had the concept of marriage uh, and, and single, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, kinship. I mean, that doesn't really even happen today outside of people who are very conservative or, or societies that are relatively conservative. If we were freewheeling tribes, it wouldn't surprise me if like, okay, you miss an opportunity to mate. It's not a big deal. There'll be another opportunity, you know, in a few months or a, in a week from now, whenever. Right. So it doesn't really make me think that there's like this huge fear of just embarrassment in and of itself. Cause that's the biological reason you wouldn't want to embarrass yourself. It's status. Maybe it's uh, mating opportunities, uh, but the kind of fear, the the I was just listening to Scott Adam give a, a lecture on loser think, and he's telling me about uh, one of the Dale Carnegie lectures or class they did on public speaking. There was a woman there who was in cold sweats, couldn't say a word. She just stood up. She was supposed to she's supposed to speak, and she just froze. That is a an animal frozen in fear. That is a response of fear of death. I think that this hints that we, as a as a species, early on. Uh, we would, I think we killed uh, our members who couldn't speak right. And that is, <laughs> you start to find these little forensic evidences, you know, these little pieces of evidence of, of really tremendous things that may have happened to us in our past because uh, some things that happened to our past are just like layers under the sediment. You start to see that, okay, back then here, there's this trait and that's, that clung on in this vestigial manner, right? With this part, we had an appendix, right? We had an appendix, so I think it was for helping digest meat. It was like a place where um, probiotics or stuff would, would or bio, you know, biotics would live to help us digest. I think, I'm not a biologist, so I don't know actually what the appendix was for. It wouldn't surprise me the biologists weren't even sure. But we have all these vestigial parts, and the fear of public speaking is one of those vestigial parts. I don't know how recently the in our history, uh, the, the, the murder, like the death fear, the fear of death, that comes with public speaking. I don't know when that went away. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it was only thousands of years ago. Uh, Cause that is a powerful response. That is still super potent. And that is not a minority of people. That is not a minority of people. If you think that that had gone away like half a million years ago or, or 50,000 years ago, you'd think that it wouldn't be such a big deal. And uh, it would be kind of like our fear of, I mean, spiders are still pretty dangerous, right? I always go to spiders because I'm also afraid of spiders, but I mean, there are certain things I'm sure that we'd be afraid of uh, before that we're not afraid of now because it's been so many thousands or millions of years. Uh, this one's powerful and it's, and it's a lot of people, you know, who hears, who here has been absolutely stricken, deathly afraid in public speaking, huge crowds, right? Ever had to speak in front of a huge crowd or, or guess what? Next time you go into class and you have a question, there's something you're not sure of. Try raising your hand. Is that easy? Is that hand go up lightly? I doubt it. It's it can be pretty tough. You have to train yourself out of it. I mean, that's that's a great you know you have to train yourself out of this deathly fear of speaking in front of people. That's powerful. So that's all I'm going to say on this subject. This has been Thinking Out Loud with uh, the Alex Manassa. I hope you guys uh, like the smash button down below. Subscribe if you want to hear more of these uh, Thinking Out Loud videos, or if you'd like to watch videos on me doing tutorials. Uh, later today, I'm going to do a tutorial on Bitwise Logic and how to do logic.
I'm going to use the whiteboard. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Peace. Mm -hmm.